Hi, this is Dr. Dave Harvey, and today I'll be providing you an overview about your blepharoplasty procedure. Some say that the eyes are a window to a person's soul. With time, the eyelid structure can change such that extra eyelid skin and redundancy can yield a tired and worn out appearance. Thankfully, these aging changes can be addressed with state-of-the-art blepharoplasty and laser techniques. As depicted in this animation, after the upper and lower lid eyelid skin is numbed, a 15 blade can be removed, used to remove extra eyelid skin tissue, in this case the upper eyelid. After removal, the orbital septum is identified in red, and once breached, two fat pads in the upper eyelid, the medial and central eyelid fat pads are exposed. These are removed using CO2 laser or electrocautery. The orbital septum can be tightened with a CO2 laser, and a plastic surgery closure is completed. In a similar fashion, a traditional lower lid blepharoplasty can be performed. A 15 blade removes extra eyelid skin, again revealing the orbital septum in red. In this instance, once breached, there are three fat pads in the lower eyelid, the medial, central, and the lateral fat pad. These can be removed with CO2 laser or electrocautery. The septum is tightened and a plastic surgery closure completed. One can also use the same incision to perform a mid-cheek facelift. Now there isn't another way to perform lower lid blepharoplasty. This is known as the transconjunctival approach. Using this modality, the incision is hidden just underneath the eyelid line. The fat pads are exposed and gently removed with CO2 laser or electrocautery. For a further cosmetic benefit, one can directly apply the CO2 laser to the lower eyelid skin. Typically it takes 40 minutes to perform upper lid blepharoplasty. For an upper and lower lid blepharoplasty, four lids, it takes 90 minutes. Here we see a picture of asymmetry of the upper eyelids being corrected with blepharoplasty. In this picture, we see lower lid eyelid skin and fullness being addressed with lower lid blepharoplasty. The risk of the procedure includes swelling, bruising, infection, bleeding with visual disturbances, scarring, and the possibility that more than one treatment is needed. Here we see what bruising looks like at five days post-op. This can be concealed with makeup. Preoperatively, we do require an eye exam and blood work. Also, it's important to stop and leave blood thinners one or two weeks before your procedure. Ensure that somebody is able to drive you to and from the procedure and to take your medications as prescribed. Post-op care includes cool compresses, natural tears. Be aware you won't be able to wear your contact lenses for one or two weeks out and to avoid heavy exercise for one or two weeks out. Thanks for your attention to our presentation on blepharoplasty. We look forward to seeing you at the office and if you have any questions about this procedure, feel free to contact the number listed above. Thank you.